right, we're on the debrief. That's Dave O'Neill with uh, comedy legend Mick, Mick Nevin, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Great to be here, Dave. Good to have you with us. And in the back seat, your partner, who's this a comedian? Is, well, this is a, this is a, this is my girlfriend, Nikki Wilkinson, actress and comedian, and recently moved to Australia. So yeah, she's in the she's in the back of the car. In the back. And yeah. and you're you're British, obviously. I am, yes. That accent, that you nor- northern, you be northern. I am northern. Yeah, yeah, you I'm can tell. Yorkshire. Oh, you can. T- I love that accent. Thanks, man. I absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I you know a lot about British either. accents, <laughs> though. <laughs> I've just. I was just in England, and um, we drove around. We drove to the Lakes District. Oh. Because my wife wanted to go to the home of Beatrix Potter, ah. which is Hilltop, which is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right. I've never been there. Oh, it's beautiful, but. Who do you reckon were the other lot of tourists there, apart from English and people, idiots like us? Who do you reckon were the other... Have a guess. What other tourists would be there? What other tourists would be at Beatrix From what Potter's country? House? What country at Beatrix Potter's house? New Zealand. No. Japanese. Japanese? Because yeah, they... I mean, I haven't seen Japanese tourists for a long time, but gee, there were a lot at Beatrix Potter's house because they <laughs> they grew up... The guy was saying they grew up with it. So... Ah. Uh, Right. So we go to the local pub because my wife takes so long in these museums. I end up in the local pub or cafe for hours sitting there, and the guy goes, "Yeah, we've got thirty Japanese coming in for lunch." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Wow, what, what food? Are they? Oh, they have their own menu. They have their own menu." So I love that bit of England up there. It's beautiful. It is. It's a love. It's it's so. It's exactly how you picture it in your head. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's like Shaun the Sheep territory. Yeah, it's like, and it's all manicured, and you know, we we grow up with all these. Movies and Doctor, you know, the vet show. The vet show, yeah, you can go to his house too. Yeah, and so it's exactly how you picture it in your head. It's we very, very manicured. Yorkshire Moors, didn't we? And it oh, it was amazing. amazing. I'd never, I live in Yorkshire and never even driven through there. Wow. But, uh, it's also, the, you know, the where the Yorkshire the Yeah, yeah, the that's murders. England's b- b- Blangelow. Yeah. I tell you what, though, once we got down off and onto the M1 or whatever it is, and you got towards Manchester and that. The demographic changed. Like, like you go, <laughs> there's just blokes in tracksuits in service stations. Like, yeah. you're right, go. Yeah, they're like sort of, you're right, go. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. yeah, it's a little not, bit different to the beach. Not, not, not quite anymore. It's not quite anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's some no. quaint spots and there's some like, oh, oh fuck. Oh, where are we? Yeah. Fuck. Um, so, um, Mick, I'm trying to remember now on this podcast, I always remember where I first met the comic. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, now, yeah, I remember yeah. when I first met you. Yep. Do you remember? Um, Turak. Oh, don't tell me the Turak Lion. Yes. yes. So I, I was doing a gig there for Jeff Phillips. Yep. Um, Jeff Phillips was a promoter yes. who'd won a Logie. <laughs> and he uh, spoke like a radio announcer. Who, he, he was a little bit Alan Partridge, actually, wasn't he? When you, you Jeff, know? he was fantastic. And even, like, he'd, he'd take each person into the room and sit them. And even if the stairs... Put his hand on your girlfriend's lower back. If he'd, <laughs> he'd, he'd sit them... He'd sit them in a seat and they'd say, we don't want to sit at the front. He'd be, you listen to me, madam. This is the very best spot. Yes. That, you know, and just seat each person He was the old-fashioned hair. host. Yes. And he had old-fashioned hair. He had like... It would have been... <laughs> now that I think about it, it would have been dyed. And it was a beautiful mane big of smile, hair. smile. Had a big smile. Um, he, he gave me my first ever money for comedy. Yeah, he'd do the handshake, wouldn't do he? Do the handshake with it, and I got, had a $20 note in it, and I was living in Warrigal doing breakfast radio, and I just drove home the whole way, holding, not the whole way, but at points in the drive, holding the $20 note out the window, going, woo, got yes. paid. Well, that's where I met you, because I, I remember they had, he had an array of Hope Young comics on, and um, <laughs> you were the best one, because you had good material. Ah, oh, well. You did yeah. your... Um, Politics of marriage. Oh, that was way yeah, that was a, which is a great way back in. They're still doing it. Oh, it's a great routine. <laughs> Why would you stop doing it? And perfect for certain crowds. Yeah, certain for, it, it does. It goes off into sportsman's night. Uh, or, or married, married yeah, people. Yeah, married you know, people love it. Yeah, the uh, the the PNC fundraiser. The, yes, that's, definitely. That's the home for the uh, politics of marriage bit, without a doubt. The PNC. Anyway, so that's where I met you, and I remember talking to you there. Yes. Oh, was that was that the night, Dicko? Oh, did, did stand somebody? up. That was the night Dicko yes. did stand up. You were there with Chrissy Swan. Yes. God, that's good. God, that's you've got a good memory. Yeah, because Dicko, you wouldn't know about that in the back. Uh, Dicko. No idea what you're talking about. No, nah, Dicko is a, a British person who moved to Australia as a record company rep, and then became a like he was like a Simon. Um, who's a bloke Simon from, Cow. Simon Cow. He's Australia's Simon Cow. Yeah. 
Dickard, and he was he was a record rep for many years, and had the best stories. And then so they were looking for a, a smart ass British person who knew about music, and he got this job as a judge on a talent show, and became famous overnight at forty. He was, yeah, and then got his own sh- but like, and then Channel Seven, he told me, so he was on Channel Ten, and Channel Seven offered him so much money, he had to go over to Channel Seven. He said it was ridiculous. What did he end up doing on Channel 7? I think he had like a a very short-lived... Sorry, I was below. Very short-lived Tonight Show. Right. I remember him, him with a show with Shannon Knoll, interviewing oh, Shannon Knoll. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if anything came of that. I don't know. He was. I worked with him. I did radio with him, and he was a good guy. Dicko, Dave and Chrissy on... Oh, uh, Vega. On Vega. Vega is, 91.5. Oh, you're good. If you're just now Smooth <laughs> FM. Yeah. What's he doing now? Oh, he... Yeah, he, he he did a whole lot of. He became like a professional celebrity, basically. Yeah. And so he did like he did won he do, Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah. Um, what else? Still, did, you guys are talking about him like he's dead. Is he alive? <laughs> yeah, he's alive. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. And he, what else did he do? He then was, he he was gored by a hippo oh, in the jungle. On I'm, I'm a celebrity, <laughs> get me out of here. He did AM radio too in Sydney for a long time. After I uh, did commercial radio, FM radio. And apparently he used to be the standby celebrity. Oh, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. So he'd go to Africa. Oh, just in case someone didn't show up. Yeah, he'd sit in the hotel room in his car keys. That's what someone told me. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> I hope that's true. That's a good gig. But yeah. now I heard that he's a wedding celebrant, which wouldn't surprise yes. me. Because he, he bloody loved the piss and he loved talking. And he was very good at that short-term engagement with people. He'd make people feel very good. Yeah. And... and He's really nice, and he can do a great speech, and then he just <laughs> get in his car and fucks off. Yeah. Oh, and I'm laughing yeah. now, because I just remembered, you broke your leg jumping him on a BMX yes, bike. that's right. <laughs> that was a radio stunt. Oh, my God. Yeah, as, uh, as someone pointed out, maybe it was you. you. You know it's radio. No one's... No one. You no could have just watching. faked it. You could have just faked it. Oh, bad times. And then we got sacked. Yeah. After that, we got sacked. <laughs> but we got sacked. So... People don't know Vega was a station in Melbourne and Sydney that is now Smooth FM. And Smooth FM's been very successful, yeah, but Vega Smooth, was Smooth not. Smooth FM's rating its tits off. But Vega Smooth was FM not. Went, uh, Vega went nowhere. Because yeah. you're an old radio. Well, I'm not an old radio person, but I've, I've, well, you know, you've I've done, done radio. breakfast radio in regional Victoria. And yeah. then you worked as a copywriter in I was, radio. Yeah, I was a, as a, you know, as a metro copywriter. Yeah. And then also, but in between that time... You worked in what factory was it again? Was it a cheese? The, the Gindavik Cheese Factory. Oh. The Gindy Cheese Factory. <laughs> and I remember someone asking you, um, "What did you do there?" No, what did you do there? I made cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but someone said, "I remember them asking you." But how do you? I mean, you used to do radio. You're doing stand-up. Well, what's? What do you? How, did you ever think you'd get out of the cheese factory? And you always said it was just one phone call away. Yeah. One phone call away. Yeah, I remember. Uh, Do you remember saying that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. I was just waiting for the phone call. And when I got the job at the Cheese Factory, I t- I went in with my resume, and like my resume is like radio copywriter, radio announcer, yeah, drama. Uh, you to drama school. Went to did a drama degree, all this, and I and the guy, you know, the Chris, the uh, the the foreman of the Cheese Factory, he reads my resume, and then he looks up at me, and says, "I think you're a bit overqualified for this job." <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to work at a cheese factory? And I said, to be quite honest with you, mate, my wife is pregnant. That's and right. My yeah. daughter's going to be born in about two to three months, and I just need a job. And he said, well, that's all the motivation I need to hear. <laughs> oh, that's good, isn't it? I remember you did that routine. I don't know. You should. I don't know if you do, but it's, you know, when you meet. You meet the guys in the factory and you go, but don't talk to... Oh, oh, yeah. what, what's the name of the guy? Don't talk to Jimmy, he's a dickhead. Oh, yes. I haven't done that for ages. Oh, that's a very funny routine. Yeah. Don't then, talk to Jim, he's a dickhead. Yeah, don't... Yeah. And then someone else comes up and says, don't talk to Jim, he's a dickhead. And then someone else comes up and goes, you're going to hate it here. Everyone is a dickhead. I go, you must be Jim. Yeah. <laughs> that's like a, an old joke, but it's not an old joke. Oh, I don't know. No, that's a classic. Well, you should bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would not balk at bringing I reckon that back. I've blanked out the cheese factory for. I, I must. Yeah, but that's fair enough. Yeah. But so, and, but so then, since then though, you've just become a working comedian. You travel around the world, don't you? Do, and, yeah, just generally, pretty much a road dog here, I guess. Road dog, mostly, mostly yeah. 
I don't have any, you know, I'm not doing radio. Because you moved to, was it Mackay or Rocky? Rockhampton. 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 Love Rockhampton. Do you? No, it's a place to live. <laughs> Is Rockhampton above or below Mackay? Below. Oh, it's below. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. All right, right. middle. Because your then wife got a job in radio, so yes. you moved up. Um, oh, man. But that, what was that like moving there? Um, you're from Gippsland originally, isn't you? Gippsland? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I... Um, go left? No, and no, I go left at the lights. Left at the lights. lights. Um, we've, we've actually just, just driven past it, so we'll just... That's all right. We'll go around. We'll go enjoy the suburbs. Yeah. No, when we moved to Rockhampton, I was just travelling a lot for work anyway. And then, so... Well, my... in a way, it doesn't matter where you're based in comedy. Yeah. Yeah, if you, like, you know... It, well, it's it's better to be somewhere where there's more work yeah, that's and more true. opportunities. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're better off being in Melbourne, Sydney. Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, people yeah. do live in Brisbane, but yeah. often, like yourself, they got children, so they've got to stay there. Yes. But but and also people live in Adelaide, and same kind of thing. But if you're trying to break into TV or whatever, Sydney or Melbourne's a go. I there's expect. more. Yeah, there's, there, there's more opportunities if you <laughs> if you're living in Sydney or Melbourne. But then again, you make your own opportunities, and you know maybe I haven't fully embraced. Rocky. What Rockhampton and what it could have done for, for my career, I, you know, I guess we'll, well never know. What, 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 what though? That's <laughs> <laughs> they have a local... just, this is getting booked for a gig in Rockhampton. This is, you know, and, Did uh, you get uh, many gigs in Rockhampton when you moved there? This is a thing that happened, right? An actual thing that happened. Um, I, I moved to Rockhampton. I reach out to some people and um, someone gets back to me and says, oh, you know, you know what? Why don't you come play poker with us? We have a regular poker night. Come join our poker night in Rockhampton. Yeah. And there's quite a few blokes who are, you know, businessmen and stuff like that. Yeah, well, they, often, a, they need people right? to see stuff. And Yep. So I go and play poker. I play a few of these poker nights. And then our friend Des Dowling, who books a lot of gigs. He's been on this podcast. He's been on this podcast, friend of the podcast. He rings me up and he goes, you're not going to believe this. Someone from Rockhampton rang me up and said, we need a comedian for our, 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 our big sportsman's day. And I said, I've got the perfect guy for you, and you're going to love it. He lives in Rockhampton. It's Mick Nevin. And their response was, yeah, we play poker with him. We need someone who doesn't live in Rockhampton. What? Because <laughs> that makes our that makes our day look a bit more special if they come from out of town. Like, what the fuck have I been playing <laughs> poker with you, Hicks, for? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good story. We need but someone from that out is, of town. Sorry, that... that if they're thinking like that, they're idiots. And you they, didn't even beat them at poker. Right? No, I didn't. Even, I didn't win a <laughs> single game. And you can, they can bill you as from out of town. You know what I mean? Like, what a bunch of idiots! And they're saving flights. They get more anyway, money. Oh, man, it was a good anyway. gig. I did it. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember those guys. They were idiots. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, good you're bunch welcome. Of yeah, you're welcome. Good bunch of people. Oh my god! Uh, interesting. All right, well, we're on the debrief. We've pulled over now. I don't know where you guys are staying. You're staying somewhere around here. Just around the corner. Just around, it's around the corner. Yeah. Well, you, well, you went past it, but anyway, ah. if you turn and turn at the... Um... We've pulled behind a, tra- a, a ute with a very interesting number Fanger. plate. Fanger. Fanger. Fanger, <laughs> Fanger mate. Fanger. Do they say that in England? Fang it? Fang it. No, fang it. I know they say fang it, but they say fang it? No. Fang it? I don't know what that means. That means drive oh, fast. Fang it. Fang it's like a, you put fang your foot it. down. Fang it. Drive yeah, fast. Fang it, mate. Oh, fang it. Give it, fang it, mate. Give I it think the... we say like hoof it. Oh, hoof see, it. we don't say that. I don't know if we do. Oh, we're learning stuff on this podcast. It's a smaller country, so they're much closer to their animals. Hoof it. Yeah, hoof it. Me. I've so you're, you're from a double axe, is that right? Yes. And what are they called again? The Cagouls. See, people listening would, might know the Cagouls, I reckon. If you, we, We've got some listeners in England. And, and and it's and you, you were saying before that you don't speak. It's like a silent act, like it's a, a si- yeah, silent physical comedy thing. Yes. Oh, that's great. It's sort of a bit slap, a slapstick. Yeah, we love that. Century slapstick. I love that. Yeah. I was looking today at a bit of Lane and Woodley, and they were slapstickish. Oh, yeah. They're very we funny. Tried to see, well, I've never actually seen them. We tried to in this year in at the comedy festival in Melbourne, but we sold get tickets. Sold, sold out. out. Jump out. They are they are our equivalents of modern clowns. They're yeah. basically. Yeah, I'll have to try and see it. They're very funny. So, what sort of gigs do you do in England then? Mick, enough of you. Um, Thanks, mate. Yeah. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> I was just getting a lift home. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to be part of this. No, but I love your accent. So yeah, it's, it's I love it. A bit of culture on. But culture. Um, we are, oh, d- d- you know, just doing the circuits. So you do pubs. Yeah, pubs, clubs, comedy clubs. You know, 
theatres, little art centres. This is Rockhampton, yeah? No, it's a joke. <laughs> you, get, you get all the mixed gigs, they get really excited. Uh, and they're excited yeah. to have English people. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Who Something don't exotic. talk. Yeah. Yeah, right, and, and it, would, it sounds like a sort of act that would go well in festivals. Yes, yes. Think. So we've, that's it. We've been coming to Australia for four or five years now, doing the ah, festival. and French so, Adelaide, do Adelaide. Yeah, Adelaide. Yeah. We're doing Adelaide next year, and um, and Melbourne too. So yeah. Well, yeah, you do the French, don't you? Yeah, yeah I do the festivals, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to go quiet now because I'm talking. Oh, I'm, I'm just, oh, you know, I don't need to dominate. She's, she's in a she's in a silent physical yeah. comedy. You like, so <laughs> don't get a chance to talk. A lot of blokes like the cagoules because it's two women who don't talk. Wow, 2019, babe. 2019, babe. <laughs> that should be on your post, the your next poster. You should, you should talk about your podcast. Uh, yeah, so where? Yeah, so yeah, let's because this is a good, you know you know who listen to podcasts. People that listen people to podcasts. Listen to podcasts. That's what people yeah, tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So you, your podcast actually sounds really interesting. So it's about the apocalypse, is well, that right? Yeah, it's called uh, <clears throat> the the Apocalypse Comedy Podcast, and it's just lo- a loose chat, a loose chat uh, about uh, the apocalypse, uh, whatever form it may take, and what people are, how people think and feel, and what they might be doing about it. So you. You kind of speak to people that have a bit of an interest in that area. Well, so like survivalists and stuff. I, I'd I saw love Dan Illich. You're talking to Dan Illich. Dan, Dan Illich was on it, and yeah, you know, he, he was at. He went to the 2015 Paris Climate Summit, so he, he's got a finger. Oh in the game. wow! Yeah, well, he's a bit. He's a bit of an intellectual. Yeah, he's, he's quite political, and he knows. You know, he knows where. Um, you know, some of the one percenters are building their bunker, and oh, yeah. I love all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's following. It, you know, the 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 head of eBay, the guy that invented eBay, Peter Thiel. His bunker he, is at, um, he's built his bunker in, in Lake Wanaka, wow. along with Shania Twain. In New Zealand. Oh, I love Shania Twain. Shania Twain and the guy who invented <laughs> eBay have got I mean, side by side <laughs> apocalypse bunkers. I've been listening to her music and my wife <laughs> hates it. That's but so my funny. teenage daughter likes it, so we, we've got to put you it on before mummy gets you. home. Oh, you both dance around the house. It's still the man, one I, I love. Like woman. I love that song and yeah. I love. Um, that don't impress me much. Yep. That's a very funny song. It's a good song. So you're a rocket scientist. <laughs> that don't impress me much. Oh, but I still love the one I love. That's my favourite. Shania Twain. She has, lives in Switzerland. She, no, she's, no, she lives in Switzerland. My she brother lives, lives in, in Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. She's got a escape bunker in New Zealand around Lake Wanaka. Oh, really? Yes, that's what I found out off Dan Illich on the Apocalypse oh, Comedy I Podcast. I love that. And, yeah. and, and um, she married an older guy who wrote songs with her so he right. wrote still the one i love and then yep. he had an affair with her best friend so she married her best friend's husband what yeah they swap partners jesus no Are <laughs> still you the one me? i love yeah i know oh. yeah. no no I, I couldn't believe it is that what that song's about no that that was written oh. with the old guy who before she left you know we're a good place before to bug, he, yeah. he left her for her best friend <laughs> A good place to bug out at apocalypse time is the rant right next to her place. Then, the, <laughs> and just play her music really loud. Just, just hey, like, I love you, Shania. <laughs> <laughs> you're still the one I love. How do you know this, Dave? I know. I just, I just, I just. You're a bit obsessed with. Only recently got obsessed with her because, uh, um, and because it's traditionally not my sort of. I like country music, but you know, I like the more, you know, Wilco and the Jayhawks. It's kind of cooler country, alternative country they call it. So I've kind of avoided that. Wilco and the Jayhawks. Yeah, they're a bit. Of, you know, Wilco. Nah. You know, Wilco. So alternative. I'm going to put it. No, they're big. Into... They're big bands in America. The American bands. Or like you know, Casey Chambers. A bit alternative. It's a bit alternative country. They call it old yeah. country. Wilco and the Jayhawks. Mate, That's going great great right into Spotify. Wilco. As soon as I get out of this. Jeff car. Tweedy. Great it's, band. This is my last name. Well, Wilco is my nickname. Wilco. Oh really? Oh, they're a great band. Yeah. yeah no, they're huge. Anyway, obviously not that huge. Anyway, um, and so I've always mainstream country. I'm a bit like whatever, but I like I still like a good song, and I reckon they're, they're great songs. So I like Dolly Parton. I think she's got great songs. Dolly Parton's having a big resurgence at the moment. Yeah, she's become trend back into it. She's become hipster again. She's like the um, she's like the Betty White. Dolly Parton yeah. she's, she's not she's, hipster. Oh, yeah, she is. She's in Australia. Yeah. yeah, you go to a concert. There'll be there'll be. She's about 102. I know, but there'll be half you know like uh, traditional country fans, and I reckon there'll be half hipsters going, "Oh, this is cool, man." Yeah. Oh, I reckon. Like yeah. The I was. Oh, yeah, there you I, go. I, I was Working into Dolly Parton nah, before any uh, anyone really? else in my age group. 
No, that's story. what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And best story about her is how she met her husband. So she was doing her laundry in a laundromat in Nashville, I think it was, and her husband <laughs> drove past in a... He, he runs a gravel business. He still does. Drove past in a gravel truck and, and yelled out of the window, Hey, pretty lady. And then she, she, she didn't say, you know, fuck off. She went, oh, how's it going? And waved to him and say, stop the truck. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they oh, got married. Married is, forever. And this is when... Blokes yell out of their car, and I don't approve of this behaviour no, at all. No. But when blokes yell out of their windows at women on the street, what as they, they drive past, gonna happen? that's why. Because there was one, <laughs> there was one, one out of a million, there was one happy story. <laughs> Dolly Parton met her husband. Did you know that's how Dolly Parton met her husband? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I reckon nine to five. She wrote, um, I'll Always Love You. It's a great song. Yeah, is it? Unbelievable. Song? I always remember on Letterman, Letterman goes to her, I still prefer your version. And she goes, well, I prefer Whitney's. And he goes, why? She goes, because it made me a lot of money. <laughs> Go, Dolly. <laughs> anyway, look, you're on the debrief, and we will return after this. You're back on the uh, debrief with, with Nikki Wilkinson from the Cajuls. Cajuls. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Mick Nevin from the Mick Nevin show. All right. From the, uh, from the Apocalypse Comedy Podcast. Yeah, just quickly the, clarify about Wilco and... The they're separate bands. Separate right. bands. Sorry about that. Wilco, Wilco. I didn't want us to sound. I think they start around the same time in America, maybe. They should. Oh, 20 they should years get ago. together. Oh, they used to probably tour together. I don't know. We'll go in. We'll go in the J. We'll go in the anything. Sounds it's great. Right. Yeah. They're great. They're both. Yeah. If anyone's interested in alternative Can country, I, I reckon they're not Shania Twain level. They're just a bit more underground. But so anyway, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the podcast. Underground country. Underground. Oh, I love it. I love. I love a bit of country music. Um, where'd you grow up, Mick? Warrigal? No. No. Uh, yes, around Swan Hill, and then west of Rockingham. Swan Rockington. Hill. Yeah. You grew up west of Rockhampton. West of Rockhampton. Well, I went to high school in a small mining town west of Rockhampton. What's that called? Middlemount. Shout Mate, out that... to you listening yep. from Middlemount. <laughs> and how, you've ended up in Rocky. I know. Oh my God. The, yeah. Yeah. Back there. But well, how? What? The how did you get into comedy? Because, yeah. like myself, you're from a working class background. Yep. Um, blue I... collar. A blue collar heartland. Yes. Um, Probably I, t- you too, Nikki. I, you sound like you're a blue yes, collar. Yes, I am. Oh, Was your father a oh. mi- miner? Or, uh, he worked taxi the- driver. Similar. Oh, that's very... <laughs> Did he have the knowledge? He had the... No, he wasn't a black cab. He was... Um, a mini cab? Just went out on his own, really. <laughs> First ever Uber. <laughs> <laughs> what town were you in? Howard. Oh, I don't know <laughs> no, where no, that... No. Hull. Hull. Oh, Hull? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, where the House Martins are from. Yeah, yeah. Have you met the... They still live there. And, uh, Do you know the House Martins? I've heard of Happy Hour one. again. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful heard South. The, the other band. From Wilco, the Jayhawks, and the House Martins. <laughs> <laughs> House Martins a car. great band. A great pop band from the 90s. Was it the 80s or the 90s? No- late 80s, I reckon. Yeah. That's 90s, maybe. Happy Hour again. You know a lot about music, Dave. Yeah, 50, 55 know. times on Specs. 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 Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. I love the House Martins. And the guy still lives there. I wanted to go to Hull last time. Purely for the House Martins. Purely for the House Martins. Because he lives in a street. He talks about the street he lives in. Where he hangs out at the does pub. He actually still live there. Yeah, he does. The Paul Heen and the Paul, the lead singer still lives there, oh. and the guitarist lives down the road. Yeah, Dicko went on tour with them, and they were huge on, into the GAC so much that this is a beautiful South sort of band. The House Martins formed after um, yeah. that. The guy was on the plane and he pooed his pants because apparently that's what happens when you're on a lot of cocaine. And he had to leave his pants on the plane and just put his coat on and walk off. Yeah, that's a horrific story. <laughs> that's rock and roll, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he left his pants on the plane. How this disgusting! Is the guy from the house. Plane. Yep. Jesus. Yep. Paul. I know, he won't sue us because he. he uh, Paul Le- Paul Heaton. Paul Heaton. Yeah. You can only see great, it's not a great, true story. great voice. A great voice. Yeah. Anyway, Mick, what did your dad do for a job again? Dad is an insulation oh, installer. That's right. Does roof insulation, that's, house insulation. That's that's a, so he worked with pink bats and all that. Pink sort of bats stuff. and stuff. Yeah. So that's yeah, a, what are his lungs like? Uh, well, you wear a mask and stuff. And yeah, but rocking. still, there's a lot of. Oh, just don't worry about it. Fucking get up there. No, was, you'll be right. You know what? He was also in the navy and smoked cigarettes his whole life. So He's I, doing I think well. the, I think the pink bats were the least of his problems. Yeah, right, right. right, um, right. When you're in a navy and you're in an asbestos-riddled ship, 
cleaning what? fuel out of a fuel tank. What was the sci-fi writer that you all liked in your family and you went to his conference? Terry and you Pratchett. Did, oh, you, and you did a gig there? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And it, and so you, your brother, and your dad were Terry Pratchett fans. Yeah. And you went and did a gig at the Terry Pratchett... At the Terry Pratchett convention. <laughs> and how'd it go? I... I just messaged the volunteers for the for the convention a few years ago and said, oh, I'll I'll do a thing of Terry Pratchett stand up." That was all right. Terry Pratchett was there and he laughed. Oh, that's that's pretty, pretty cool. awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. It was pretty cool. Is it though? I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, is that why you got with this man because no, of his Terry Pratchett? I found out when I was too deep that he was a nerd, <laughs> and then I was already fallen in love, and I couldn't well, stand back. Well, you know, Mick, though, for people that don't know him, he has a bogan. Not You don't have a mullet or anything, but you have a bogan. I, I was raised a bogan. Yeah, it's, no it's a deaf, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. raised a bogan, and then through, you know, I got educated and became self aware. In a, uh, in, you know, you do an arts. I did an arts degree, like Dave. myself. But you've still got a bogan degree. edge, and that's and that's evident. It's there for life. But you, you would never pick you as a bit of a sci fi fan. Um, no. No. Probably not. Intriguing. That's yeah. really, really interesting. Yeah, what point did, did that surface? He, Nicky, what time? Uh, probably actually only when he went out to spray a suit gold for him this year at the Melbourne Coin Festival <laughs> when he was going to his little nerd convention. I went to the Terry Pratchett convention dressed uh, as a character from one of the books. Did you really? And well, I had to MC the, the gala dinner. Of course and you did, so mate. I the gala dinner. Now for you've a really ticket. bloody nailed the Terry Pratchett gigs. All right, now let me let, <laughs> let me run this through. Let me run this through. So to get a free ticket, I emceed the MC'd yeah. the gala dinner at the Terry mm-hmm. Pratchett convention. Which so I dressed up as one of the characters, Moist von Lipvik. Moist. That's and so oh. Nikki and I it was in the comedy festival, so there's a bit going on. And so Nikki had to spray paint this suit gold for me. Then. I went to went and did the gig, and my dad was there. And how he, cool! So dad's there, hadn't seen him for a while. He sits down at the bar. He says to the barman, "He goes, I'll need two pints of cider, please." And then he gets the two pints. He looks at me. He goes, "What are you drinking?" I said, "What are you drinking two pints of cider for?" And he goes, "I've just done a little walk to get me diabetes under control, All so right. I can get on, so I can have a few beers tonight. Um, but I'll need to drink these two pints to rehydrate myself. What are you having?" And then at the end of that night, after I said goodbye to him at like two o'clock in the morning at the Expert Oof, Hotel, big night. He went home, but fell over at the front of his hotel, <laughs> hit his head on the concrete. Oh no! I wake up the next morning, and like the whole family's left messages on my phone going, "Your dad's in the hospital." <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Please, Terry, nerd kill, killed at the Terry Pratchett. In the hospital, yeah. That's and awful. <laughs> So then I had to go. Oh, so right. then I had to go and clean up his stuff from. So anyway, so that's the science fiction and the bogan comes back. Oh, right? that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> pissed, pissed at the sci-fi convention. That's why you didn't start a fight. <laughs> Come on, you pricks. Who said Tolkien was better? <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's arguing about that shit? Yeah. Oh, that's. So then, why did you get into comedy though? That's, we haven't even. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Well, then. So uh, I just I, I did the arts degree. Had oh, even elements of drama in there. Yeah. Weren't so yeah. drama and creative writing, and then some friends. We were doing a. Um, we were doing a. Th- you know, we were doing shows at the Gold Coast Art Centre, which had a regular Friday night yeah, comedy I show. Doing it. Yeah. And then um, there's the back. What was his name? The 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 oily guy that used to Grant. Oh yeah, yeah Grant. 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 Yeah. That's it. Grant. Grant. Who, one of my friends was heavily involved in, uh, you know, dodgy stuff, and he goes, I know that guy. Yep. I know him. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, he's... Uh, and he, I think he, he passed away. Oh, really? Yeah, well, it was years ago. Yeah, was he, was, he loved me. So then he was running he it. He got me up for a gig and it was terrible. Oh, God. It was awful. Anyway. He, yeah, he was running it. Yeah. <laughs> we you know Grant? No. Yeah. We were doing gigs on the Thursday night, and then the Friday night there was the stand-up comedy. Yeah. And then they had a competition every year, the Legends of oh, Laughter at the Gold Coast yeah, Arts Centre. Oh, yeah, and you Centre. won, didn't you? Uh, I, came, I entered it and came third. Won 300 bucks. Almost won. Yeah, won 300 bucks. <laughs> the bronze. Yeah. Did you do your Terry first Pratchett prize, stuff? <laughs> first prize got three grand. First prize That's was three grand. Are they still doing comedy? Second prize was a grand, and then third prize was 300. No, the dude who won first yeah, prize, yeah. Matt Ma, he went on... Uh, Australia's Got Talent. Oh, the one who stole jokes? And cried. No, he's not the one who stole jokes. He went on and cried. And oh, then, that um, guy. Yeah, I remember him and sang a song and stuff. Yes, yes. Bigger guy, bigger yeah, lad. Yep, yep, yep. And he sang the Julio Iglesias song. And then um, 
and yeah, you know, and then um, you know, someone messaged me when he was on and goes, "Hey, that uh, just remind me, you got beaten by the fat dude crying." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. And Nikki, how did you get into comedy? Uh, acting really fast. Yeah, right. Drama school yeah, and sort of went through that way. I used to work in a comedy club. Oh, which one? Um, in London, in Covent Garden, a place called The Funny Side. Yeah. Um, back in the day, it was good. It was great. Ran five nights a week. It was a nice little sort of yeah, you know, great un- brick wall underground thing. Saw Robin Williams there. Oh wow! Pretty, pretty high. That's amazing. Like, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Rob Williams, McNevin, similar, yeah. similar, <laughs> similar. Both, 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 yeah, both. Dave O'Neill. Both underappreciated <laughs> geniuses. I'm, I hear it. Baby, another song I love. It's got that on my phone. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The only way is up. Um, I'm Australia's Robin Williams. I don't know if Mick's told you. Yeah. Uh, I've probably said yeah. that to him several Coke. times. I'm on Coke right now. Yeah. Um, I read his book. It's so sad. He's he was so brilliant. He he actually had a he got a disease in the end. He got some form of Alzheimer's or something. And he didn't know why he was acting really weird. And that's one of the reasons I reckon he killed himself because he didn't oh, know. He, really? Yeah, because they analyse his brain. Well, you should read the book. They anal- they, well, you've seen him. You've met him. So, yeah, they, they did an autopsy and said, oh, he actually had this form. I think it was a form of Alzheimer's. Wow. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Because he was acting very Who's weird. It in the book? What's the book? Oh, it's called Robin. The book's called oh, Robin. Is yeah, it not yeah. a biography? No. <laughs> 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 a post-mortem autobiography. Yeah, no, it's biography. Well, uh, written on a Ouija had board. A, had, a, had a different brain. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I interviewed him once so on the radio and he was great. Yeah, yeah, just over the phone, but he was amazing. Yeah, Felt like I know him. It was amazing watch. I mean, oh, it was a small club, 60, 70 people jam-packed in this club. It wasn't big. God, I hope no one had to go on after him. No, no, no. no, 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 no it's good. Not. And then, and he had loads of people around him that were like, "Come on, we're gonna go." And he was like, and he, he did about an extra like forty-five. Yeah, minutes. Like, he was just brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I've but, heard um, that. Yeah. Now I asked everyone these I questions. Saw him, I saw him at Rod Laver Arena, and he closed with the Bono joke. Did you see him at Rod Laver Arena? He closed with it every time someone. Every claps, time I clap my hands, someone dies. Someone, a, a child then, in Africa dies, yeah. and then so he closed with that. Oh, that's that's disappointing. I know. It's a good joke, but it's an old joke. Yeah. Is that? Uh, Who knows? Maybe he wrote it originally back in the eighties. Is it? And then they go, "Stop clapping your hands." Yeah, Yeah, stop clapping your hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people here do it. It's disappointing. Oh, you just you shouldn't have said that. There's someone doing on a a cruise ship right now. (laughs) Never, never meet. Yeah, never meet your heroes. Uh, 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 I'd never go and watch him. He's great when I was. Oh yeah. Um, (laughs) But yeah, they talk about in the book how he. He would have to write checks out for people who he stole their jokes. So, oh. and, and people started taking advantage of him, saying, "You stole my joke," and he just write checks out. And they're like, yeah. "Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah." It's a really, <laughs> really good read. <laughs> yeah, what was going? On? It's a really good read. Anyway, I asked all these people these questions. So, what went well tonight in the gig, Mick, and why? Or we can ask Nikki. If she wants to. Um, what went well tonight, Mick? Uh, well, I did a, a, a new bit about being vegan three days a week. And oh, yeah. I just sort of squeezed it in the middle there. and That was good. It's, that was the first time I've done it and really just sort of re- thought about it today and thought I'd just throw it out well there. Well done. For a bit of a, yeah, what so, didn't go well? Um, the, um, the, the German salute bit. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we've already had a German salute We'd joke. We've had two. David Rose did one, and then Daniel Connell did one. That's right. And I, I had no intention of doing what doing well, you did it. it anyway. But yeah, because those two did it, I just said, "Ah, what? The, I'll just do it, just so that there's three in a row." I have and to say. And then, and then Randy referenced it. He goes, "I just threw that in there because I wanted to be racist as well." <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, your, your description though of getting athletes foot in the shower was very good. Oh, it's good to get a, like but, a whole groan off a room full of people oh, when, they, when they can see it happening. But you know. it is, we've all been through that when the. Anyway, I won't go into your routine, but when the water washes over the thong that you're yeah. wearing to stop you from getting pamplonas or what they used to call them, um, warts on your feet. Um, okay, were there any organisational hazards that got in the way of your gig? Tonight? Yeah. No, it's the funny house. It's the funny house. Perfect. Yeah. It was a great gig. Oh, Can't good on Nikki. Yeah. yeah, it's like a classic local suburban gig. Got a free yeah. bowl of chips. Oh, that's unusual. Mm. Yeah. They normally charge me for that. Um, and how can we do better next time? Uh, I, I, have it in Rockhampton yeah if you, <laughs> if you could take the fun house on a national tour uh, and we could swing through the central highlands through Rockhampton uh, Middlemount Murrumbah Thierry Blackwater oh listen to that yeah 
it will show those poker playing fools. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, 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 all, here. they're all coal mining towns too. So if we could get yeah. some real left wing comedians on there, yeah. Rod Quantock, <laughs> right. let's get Rod Quantock He'll to do real. a swing through the coal mining towns. <laughs> He'd love it. Well, Mick, <laughs> thanks for coming on the gig. So where can people find you? They can follow you on Twitter. Yeah, uh, Twitter. Twitter and Instagram, at, at Mick Nevin. Go to my website, micknevin.com.au, and um, all the links are there. If you're in Rockhampton, you need a comedian, especially. <laughs> yeah, especially. You know, I, I, yeah, I'd, I prefer to just stay close to Rockhampton, wherever possible. So Mackay. Yeah. Well, he'll accept Mackay, maybe towns will Mackay, Gladstone. Yeah. Mackay, oh, Gladstone. I just want a poker game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikki, so you'll be doing the festivals next year, Mick? Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Cool. And yeah. uh, Nikki, where, where are you performing? Uh, you you know, come out to the festivals next year? Yeah, I'll be around. Great. Adelaide, Melbourne, yeah. Cool. The Kagools. The Kagools. Yeah, K A G O O L S. Yeah, I'm, are they on YouTube and stuff? You on YouTube? Uh, not too Not much really. Much no, no, they're, they're, the they're unique. Kugels. You can't. The, no one in the world's doing what the Kagools are doing. Yeah, oh, they sound very good. I'm going to check them out. Thanks, guys. I'll see you again on the debrief. See you, Dave. All right. Ooh, ooh,